Morning everyone, it's our hostage here and we're going to do another episode and I felt the urge to come back live again because um, I just made a decision and the decision was made a lot easier when Zoe left the comment on my last video. So it won't be a great big long one that we'll be doing, right? All it'll be is just having a little quick chat. Now, as I say, I was contacted today and said that it, oh, my channel's been re-monetized. So I thought about that, and then I thought, do I want all this aggravation? And my main concern was that um, when a channel's monetized, it's more high profile that's what I assumed, and it's held to a higher standard, and that it's easier to strike or cause trouble for. So my um, so my initial thought was, okay, right. Well, I don't really need this more. You know, it, it's annoying more than anything because it hold, <clears throat> makes me want to hold back even more. So, as I said to you on the earlier live, I'll, I'll think about it over the weekend. Well, when I ended the live, I was thinking my gut instinct is to <clears throat> leave the monetization. So, I put the video up. Then Zoe came in and left a comment. No to monetization, no to something else. What was it she left? Let me, I'll give it a quote. No to partner program, no to YouTube monetization. And that, you know, for me, gave me the reassurance that my gut instinct was right. So I thought, I better fire up another live and see what we got to say. So anyway, all of a sudden, Zoe came in and went, yes, it was me, because I didn't know whether it was her, because you don't see a spanner when someone leaves a comment after a video has been loaded up. So I thought, what should I do? Should I go live and then announce on the live, I'm demonetizing the channel and do it on the live? Then I thought, well, will I be able to do it when I'm still going live? Will it cause, uh, will it mess something up or something or won't it work or will it knock me off the live? So what I've done is I've gone to the YouTube studio to the earn section, right, and clicked on leave the program. I clicked on leave the program and it said, are you sure you want to leave? If you want to reapply or re re reinstate it, right, you cannot do it for 30 days. So I clicked on the box and went, right, accept. Right, that was it. So now the channel is demonetized yet again. Thank goodness. But this time, it's my own choice to do so. I never missed the money. A, a maximum I got was about £100. And for £100 a month, right, do I want the aggravation? Now, I'm still not certain whether being demonetized means you're um, more deregulated or you're not held to certain conditions, I'm not sure. But what we do is we go through the comments and we'll have a listen, little chat with Zoe because Zoe's here. Hey, Zoe, why have you been missing for two days? I know it's a, uh, you, you can come back and say to me, what's it got to do with you? I was busy. Oh, that's Eno's. Excuse me. You know Eno's the pet, um the uh, stuff for your tummy keeps your Eno's or Andrew's liver salts. When I eat, I always have a glass afterwards. It helps the food goes that go down. And I'll just oh no, I was naughty tonight. I've had eggs and bacon and tomatoes. In two great big sandwiches. I know it's naughty. <clears throat> so, Zoe said, Good evening, Art. 
Good evening all. May the Lord bless us and keep us strong. It was indeed I who commented. So now Zoe goes on to say, monetization is worth it if you're operating on a very large scale because the percentage you lose is negligible, but it's not worth it in a vast majority of cases. Well, my investigations means that that anyone who's monetized, monetized only ever gets 39% of the money they create or generate. So for every one pound or one euro, right? for every one pound generated, the person who owns the channel gets 39 pence. The other 61 pence goes off into the ether. Right, so, so, so first of all, that goes against my principle of fair money. I'm not, you know, I'm working to put money in someone else's pocket. So, right, and that's like with the art crime thing. Right, the Fitzwilliam Jade was worth 56 million and they wanted to offer a hundred thousand pounds to recover it. I went, no, go away, I'd rather not have nothing. And by the way, you won't get it, right? Next time they called, I went, yeah, it's in China. How do you feel now? Anyway, so it's not the money. It's the principle of the matter. She goes on to say, Zoe, the buy me a coffee impl implementation is a nice gesture from YouTube. <coughs> Excuse me, to be fair, to allow someone to monetize outside of their purview. Thank you. Yes. If YouTube was a fully free speech platform, the cut they take could be justified, but they aren't, so it's not. We are only allowed to have these conversations because we are under the radar. So important to know that the more you grow here, the more you are shackled. A lot like modern life in many ways. You cannot be banned for comments on the live so a shrewd host can manage how they interact with the chat but as an open platform how could a host possibly be punished for what a commentator says so the balance struck now is ideal and perfect hence why it's working more of the same i'd say look who's back thinking i wasn't watching who's that then not at all, Art. I don't interpret it like that. It's unusual for me now to be around. It's unusual for me now to be around, and I appreciate the question. I don't really experience life like a regular person, some mad stuff going on, not to be around. Oh, right, it's unusual for you not to be around. Okay, Zoe, that's all right. Of course, it, you know, if you're busy or whatever, just drop in. If, when I drop a live, say, in the afternoon, you know, drop in and say, evening all, um, I'm, a, I'm a bit busy, so I won't be around today. But you know what it's like. If people think Zoe's not around, they can slip in with one of their 14-day um, subscriptions. <clears throat> but, yeah, that was the main thing. That was the money. And, and Zoe, what do you think? Do you think channels that, that are not monetized are not as censored heavily as those that are monetized? That's a question I'd like, to, uh, like you to answer. The fact since I've been demonetized at Christmas, we seem to have been plain saving. You know, our... Complaints about channels that are monetized taken more seriously than channels that are not monetized. Again, I honestly don't know. Yeah, it might not be, mightn't it? But again, for the sake of it, being monetized and that, and the aggravation I've had with all of that stuff, right? To be honest, I... I want to um, I want to have least shackles on the channel because even the thought of it, oh, I better not say that because I'm monetized. I don't want to have to do that.
And for the amount of money, right, say someone gives me £10 in a super chat, right, well, I know I'm getting £3.90. £6.10 goes, right, is for the privilege. And so that always rankles with me. I don't mind sharing. I don't mind being fair, right? I don't, but I don't reckon all that someone earning money off of my back like that. I understand there's a pecking order or whatever, but even up to Joe Rogan, he didn't reckon that one neither. When he was on YouTube getting millions of views, yes, he was getting a million dollars a year or whatever it was, right? But he was still only getting his 39% of right of what was, was being dished out. That's why when Spotify came along, he went, yeah, lovely. So at the end of the day, it's whether people want to accept that. You know, and if people don't mind that they're only getting, right, about a quarter, right, or a third of the money they're generating, fair enough. I suppose it's like an author. You know, if you write a book and you sign a deal with, say, um, um, Schuster Books or Harper and Harper to write a book, you get about, you get 10%. 10% gross. So for every pound that that book you write generates, right, you get 10 pence. I know. J.K. Rowling's a billionaire, right? But, right, Harry Potter has generated probably 25, 30 billion dollars. So at the end of the day, I've taken a decision. I don't want the, the crumbs from the monarch's table that are available. I'd rather just continue to go as I do. And if something else comes along um, as a result of the YouTube channel, good. If it... Hang on. Excuse me. Yes, Zoe, this channel is quality over quantity. Monetization is great in theory, but not in practice. No. And also, I think it holds people back as well. Plus, there's all this other stuff, you know. So, for the sake of the aggravation, I can't be arsed with it. Anyway, I've already done it. I've done the thing. I've left the program. <clears throat> I read that quickly, Zoe. Yeah, but I do believe, I, I agree with you. Yeah, the nuance that we can have without monetization, let alone right dissent or saying something that might be incendiary, right, is, is something which is a strength of the channel that we try to push you know the envelope back as far as we can, but we don't. We now have to know where we where it's too far, and we don't want to go there because martyring ourselves for the sake of whatever the cause is, right, does no one any good. It don't do anyone any good, right? So we got to play within the boundaries. <clears throat> So, to be honest with you, it was a poison chalice, I think, the monetization thing is. Not least because other people only get 39% of the cake, right? But also the other things that go with it. Because I'm certain that monetization, monetized channels do encounter a lot more problems with YouTube when they're reported. But apart from that, it's a self censoring thing oh i'm monetized i don't want to go too far in case they demonetize me <laughs> excuse me
Well, Nick, if you want to say that, that's okay, right? But if someone has got gravitas, if someone can hold an audience, right, why shouldn't they say that if you want to give me something for doing it, you can? I don't see any difference. Someone gets interviewed on the BBC. They get they get paid something. Their exes and all that stuff. So people on YouTube, why not if they can do that? You know, so if someone's got something to sell and it's content that they produce on their, their YouTube channel, why can't, why shouldn't they uh, be able to benefit from that and allow people to decide? The thing is, is we've got so, so many idiots and vulnerable people out there, right, that um, grifters come in. You're right. Buy me a coffee. But then that's, look, I've got buy me a coffee at the top. It's one pound per coffee. Other channels are, are five pound or ten pound, right, a cup. And then what they do is get someone who's vulnerable and get them to buy them hundreds of cups of coffee, which comes to hundreds, if not thousands of pounds. Now, that's taking something to the extreme. You get people saying that they're raising money for some kind of charity or some kind of thing that they intend to do to help people, right, and end up giving no none of them the money and running off with the money and spending it. And then they get chased off of YouTube, leave it a year, and then they start to drift back on again. My recommendation is give right is to give no one anything with regards charity. If you want to give someone a cup of coffee, right, you do that because you've enjoyed the content that they've produced. Simple as that. Excuse me. Yeah, with the far left, right, the far left, um, right, they, they want a hand out, not a hand up. They're happy to be in the gutter. So they're looking for someone to give them a hand out so they can remain, <clears throat> remain in the gutter. Upwardly mobile people who want to actually achieve something or do something look for a hand up out of the gutter. And you've got to try and strike a balance. Yeah, well, Zoe, my, when I grew up, my... My thought, the difference between the right and the left, the left wanted to keep everyone down at the bottom in the gutter. The right wanted to offer a hand out and allow some, the best of the best out of the gutter, right, and be socially mo mobile, upwardly mobile. So in other words, if you, right, they're not, two of them are not good choices, but at least you've got some chance with the right, but with the left, you've got no chance. No chance whatsoever. They want everyone dragged down into the gutter with them. No technology. They don't want no advancement. All of that George Orwell stuff was all the left. It was portrayed as... <clears throat> it was portrayed... <clears throat> it was portrayed as the left, but in actual fact, it was the right. Although the right, right, it's not that good, no, ever. You've got to try and find compromise in the centre ground. Exactly, Zoe. Yes, it's transient, the class system. You get a bright kid, comes from poverty... Works hard, goes to university, gets a white collar job, meets a girl, have a couple of kids, right? She's got a, a professional career. Their children go to private school. They grow up, be barristers. Look, you see, social mobility. 
aspirations. Now, there are some vulnerable people who need protecting, who are unwell, but a lot of people, especially on YouTube, right, are fakers, <laughs> right? They're lazy. They don't want to do anything, right? And they want to play the victim, right? They rather do nothing, right? And, and, and that's their right to do, but they're all telling lies. They're all, they're all more able to do things than what they are, but they're all telling lies. I know that. But that's the difference, you see, right? Um, and for all the ills of Margaret Thatcher, right, um, and Ronald Reagan and that, right, that, that's, that kind of social mobility did at least produce some results. And I understand it was only the cream of the working classes, the intelligent ones who could get on. But that's human nature. That's the difference. I understand the uh, Chicago School of Economics, Milton Friedman, Survival of the Fittest. <clears throat> that's the thing. And that's where I think a lot of the struggle is, you see. And this right-left paradigm, okay, is absurd because all of the things the right were being accused of, the left get accused of, and all the things the left were accused of, the right are being accused of it. The right is the left now, yes. Well, the, yes, I mean, in history, when you see the rebel, so-called rebellious left, the workers trying to have fight for decent rights, for, for plumbing and heating for families and council houses and a decent pay and, um, and health and safety, not the crazy stuff, just the pure stuff where people didn't kill themselves and all that at work. All of that used to be done by the so-called left. That has now been ditched by the left. And now the left are mentally ill. They're on the social issues, trying to make th uh, people things that they are not. Not only are they not, right, science and facts and biology backs up the argument. They're trying to dispel that. Any of them old left policies, right, have been thrown out. Funny enough, those policies, better conditions for workers, better pay, um, better conditions in housing and infrastructure, and that have been picked up and put on the right-hand side. And the right, with a lot of their nasty authoritarian policies, were ditched. And those policies were then picked up by the left. Yes, it's been a changing of the guard. It's been a turning of the tables which proves in itself that the whole paradigm, the whole notion of right and left is false. It's only done to suit a certain agenda. But at the, un the underlying factor, right, is that it really is a big club, right, and we ain't in it, or the most people are not in it. And it's the rich people, wealthy people, influential people who, who run everything. And so what you can, all, you, all you can hope for is that you can infiltrate that in such a way to give yourself a better standard of living. And a lot of the arguments when you talk about things like free education, free higher education, they say, oh, who's going to pay for it? Well, listen, you blew that whistle in 2020. You found a magic money tree worth trillions. You blew that whistle back in 2008 when you bailed out all the banks for hundreds of billions, trillions of dollars. So don't come the old acid with the there ain't no money and all that stuff.
there's always money if you want to do it. It's ideology. All the austerity from 2010 to 2020, right? What was it for? Nothing. It was to reduce the debt from 169 billion pounds in the UK down to 30 billion. When they got it down to 50 billion, then 2020 happened and it went up to 500 billion. So don't start all that game with me. There is money there if people choose to use it for the right things. Now, with higher education, that is a, that pays for itself. And you say, how? And I say, every graduate who comes out of university works in the public sector for three years. And then that right, they don't pay any education fees and can go off into the private sector. So it's like the GI Bill. You join the army and right, and we'll pay for your university education, higher education. It pays for itself. You're getting quality graduates coming out of university and working in the public sector for three years. They go on to the private sector, the next lot come along. Those are practical solutions, but sometimes people don't want practical solutions. I said two years ago, the, the practical solution to the dinghies coming across the channel is to pick them up the UK border force, sign an agreement with the French, pick, the, pick up the immigrants on the boat, give them a blanket, give them a cup of tea, go back to the French beach and throw them off and say, off you go, and we'll be here tomorrow to do the same. You're not coming to the UK. Within two weeks, they give up. Of course they would. Now more people are starting to say that, but it wasn't brutal, it wasn't anything, it was just literally, off you go, come on down the plank, that's it, we'll say, well, that's what we did this morning, go, well, it's your own fault, pop their dinghy, and that's it. The people smugglers would certainly, right, give up after about two weeks, because everyone would go, well, I want my money back, I'm, I can't even get across there, so, so that would be the way to sort that out. And we've had a world lockdown. We've had a lockdown globally, right, in 2020 for health reasons. Why can't we have a global lockdown for migration and integration reasons? Say that for the next two years, there's going to be no immigration and migration anywhere around the world. We compensate the airlines and everything like that, but we don't want anyone leaving countries and we don't want anyone coming into any countries, any countries. Ban travel for two years, right? Say, because we've got to sort out the mess that we've got now. Again, a practical solution. People say, oh, you can't do this. What do you mean we can't? We got the template. We did it in 2020. So why can't we do it now? Sort out this migration problem once and for all. So, you know, there's, so there's plenty of things that we can talk about. There's plenty of things that we can speak about. And as and when stories drop, we will focus and, you know, with a laser-like view on them and dissect them and all of those kinds of things. But to be honest, I, I've made a decision tonight and it makes me feel a lot more relaxed, to be honest. Right, the fact that I was tempted with this carrot of we've monetized your channel again, and I've said, no, uh, thank you very much, but that won't be for me. Because to be honest, like the Australian saying, if it's not broken, why try and fix it? And from Christmas, when the channel got demonetized, I've had a kind of cathartic experience. We've had Zoe Gilday. Is, is, has been a, a resounding success as the one and only moderator. We've had good conversations since then, right? I've recently ring-fenced the channel with a 14-day wait as a subscriber before you can comment. 
So why do we want to upset the apple cart? Why do we want to bring more attention to ourselves, right, by being monetized and having that, you know, used as a weapon against us? Evening, Doyle. How are you doing? I don't know if you've caught up today, but I was the channel was monetized again, and so I demonetized it. I don't want anything to do with it. Nothing to do with it altogether. It, you know, look, it's different. If we were talking about cooking, if we was talking about knitting, if we was talking about painting. Right, or if we was talking about art in general, not crime or anything like that, of course, monetization and you try to build the channel and all of the fluffy things that go with it. But the but because of the subject matter we talk about, okay, it's not worth it. Many of the channels don't um, um, don't get monetized or or they're monetized, but a lot of the videos don't is because they. Um, because people swear a lot. Now, you notice, right, that I don't swear very much. I can get animated, I can get annoyed and all that, but in my everyday speech, I don't swear very much at all. And it's surprising. If you go and listen to people, right, and, and listen to how much they swear, how much they curse right, as um, in their everyday speech, it, it, it tells you a lot about the person. Morning, Lennon, how you doing? So anyway, um, I just thought I'd come back and, and share a few thoughts with you. Is anyone else live? Let's have a look. Well, it doesn't look like um, anyone else is... Um, Let's have a look, and I'll see. Um, yes, so to be honest with you, I feel quite free now. I do. I feel I feel a lot better. It's a burden that I couldn't be asked with, to be honest, all that monetization, even if it's only a psychological thing about, you know, that I think. So anyway, I just thought I'd come back live and let you know. And as I say, um, I'm keeping one eye on Zuju with a Z, a Z, Zuju, and what's going on, because that's quite amusing. Because when people seem to lose the plot, they show their true selves. And last night, Someone ripped all their shirt off and everything and got fuming and that. It was it was hilarious to watch. And now we're getting people, other people coming back. And some people have got dark histories, which is being exposed and all of that. Well, okay. But there's a few people lurk. They come back in and then they get reminded of their dark history. They step back, leave it, and then they look and see if the coast is clear and they can come back again. So I've kept away from any news because there's not really much news that I've seen drop. So maybe I'm wrong. Let's have a look, see if there is anything. One thing I think might be true, again, I don't really care, but one thing I think might be true is that those channels that are not monetized 
or sorry, those channels that are mon monetized get preference over those that are not monetized with promotion, I'd imagine, from YouTube. That they, you know, if they've got a list of channels that to promote, the monetized ones would get more promotion than non monetized. I might be wrong. But again, look, the bottom line is for, for the amount of money that I'm used to get for uh, for monetization and the hassle and all that that he went for, it's not worth it. I think John Smith's live, is he? Oh, yeah, John Smith's live. He's got someone on. Right, he done, oh, yeah, it's, I know that fella is, yeah, and that, yeah. Someone else with mental health problems. Do I believe the rumour going round that P. Doyle invented Bitcoin? I, it's the first I've heard about it when you wrote it above. I thought it was um, um, Kushikwaki Kawasaki or something, wasn't it? He was some Japanese fella. Called Itchy Fanny Kawasaki or something. Satchawaki. I don't know what his name was. I know if I'd have listened to Max Kaiser in 2011 when Bitcoin was $1 each and now they're $50,000, I'd be rich. But then again, you know, it's like it's hindsight, isn't it? So I'll bring this one home. It's just a little quick one, 36 minutes, an extra. Yeah, that's it. Um, Satoshi Nakamoto is P. Doyle, P. Doyle. Right, OK. I did see P. Doyle several times on a video, and he didn't look anything like Satoshi Nakamoto. He looked like, um, dare I say it, an ex-military officer. In fact, he had, he looked like um, um we're well not quite because he looked like he's got the slick back hair with the moustache, right? Um, it ain't half hot, mum. Where is this Doyle video? Doyle Doyle used to come on the videos with call tools and other people like that. So I've seen Doyle, unless it was the wrong Doyle, but Doyle um had a moustache and he had his hair slicked back. He reminded me of a bloke about in his 50s. I might be wrong. And um, and, it, and, it, and he's a man with letters after his name. The Federation of Certified So-and-Sos or whatever. I thought he was a surveyor or an architect or something like that. Yeah, he's 55. He look, you know, he looks like a company director, or he would look like some, you know, a suit, right? Or, and you would say, "Oh, what do you think?" He, yeah, I think he's ex-military or something like that. That's what I would have thought. So that's all I can say um, on that one, Zoe. So anyway, I'll bring this home, shall I? I might go over and have a listen to what John Smith's got up to, who else he's talking to, who's on there with him. So everyone, right, I'll bring this one home, right, it's only a little 40 minute one, Saturday night, Sunday morning, I think that 
between Zoe and myself, we've made the right decision, right, to demonetize the channel, and it is our decision to do it. It's not, we haven't been forced to. The temptation of the minute amount of money for the possible headaches and all that stuff and the possible self-censoring and that is is in my view not worth it. <clears throat> so on that note, right everyone, just have a good Saturday night. It's now Sunday morning. I'll see you later on today. We might do a lunch one, an early evening one, a late night one. You'll get your Sunday one. This is a little extra. So on that note, I shall bring this home. Hit the like, subscribe. You can buy me a coffee. Let's go back to what is successful. You know, if it's not broken, let's don't try and fix it. Right? There's no monetization on this channel apart from you can buy me a coffee at one pound. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. But at least hit the likes and subscribe. That's all I ask of you. If it's not broken, don't try and fix it. That's that's what I'm thinking of. So on that note, I'll bring this home. And this is our hostage signing off. <laughs>